So welcome to today's meeting on the draft programmatic environmental impact statement for the West Los Angeles campus draft master plan. I'd like to introduce the panel for this meeting. And today's speakers are Megan Flans, executive director for the West Los Angeles draft master plan. Glenn Elliott and Hector Aru from BA's Office of Construction and Facilities Management, and Ian Musa, who will be the meeting moderator. Uh, at this time, I'd like to turn the podium over to you. Thanks, Eric. Good, e good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Ian Musa. I'm a vice president with Concourse Federal Group. In compliance with the National Environmental Policy Act, known as NEPA, the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, or VA, is holding public meetings to gather feedback on the draft programmatic environmental impact statement that was released in December 2018. We are hosting three public meetings over the course of three days with the intent of reaching the broadest audience. The anticipated audience for this draft programmatic environmental impact statement or PEIS includes veterans, veteran organizations, historic and cultural resource groups, local and state government agencies, and the surrounding community. These public meetings are designed to inform the public about the content of the draft PEIS, describe the proposed action and alternatives, present the project timeline, solicit comments and questions on the proposed action and the analysis performed and identify any issues that have not been addressed. VA intends for these public meetings to be informative with a formal presentation followed by an open forum comment period. Each public meeting will follow the same format and contain identical content with the exception of the public comments. For those of you interested in providing feedback during the comment period, we have comment forms at the welcome table. Please submit your comment in writing. I will read your comment during the comment period. Please head to the welcome table at any time during the presentation and fill out a comment card. We also have Matt Buckley handing out cards. Matt, can you identify yourself? If you look to the back, that's Matt. Uh, if you look to the back, that's Matt. At any time, if you need a comment card, feel free to raise your hand. He'll come by and give you one. This ensures that we have an orderly process that allows for everyone the opportunity to comment. The community is encouraged to submit comments on the draft PEIS. The public comment period will conclude on Wednesday, February 13th, 2019. Comments can be provided in several ways online at www.regulations.gov, by mail to the address on the screen. Public comments can also be shared during these public meetings, either verbally or written on a comment card. Please note that the February 13th, 2019 comment review deadline reflects an extension from the original deadline of January 29th, 2019. This extension was granted in response to stakeholder requests. In light of the lapse in federal appropriations for the Environmental Protection Agency, which administers the comment review dates in regulations.gov, the website is unable to accept comments past January 29, 2019. However, comments may still be submitted via mail. They will also be accepted through the general draft master plan email at bhaglamasterplan at va.gov. The information provided on the screen is also posted on the West Los Angeles Draft Master Plan website. If you are interested in reading the full draft PEIS or learning more about the Draft Master Plan, please visit the project website at www.losangeles.va.gov slash masterplan. All comments received will be considered by VA and addressed in the final PEIS. All comments, whether received once or in duplicate via email, letter, or in person, will receive the same level of review, evaluation, and consideration. Before we dive into the content of the presentation, I would like to review a few administrative items. 
These public meetings are intended to inform the public and create a forum for receiving comments. VA requests that all participants show respect to fellow attendees and speakers. As a reminder, this meeting is focused on the draft master plan, draft PEIS. If you have questions or comments unrelated to the draft PEIS, such as questions about your healthcare benefits or other VA services, we have subject matter experts who can help you in the back of the room. At any time during the presentation, please make your way to those tables for any questions or comments not relating to the draft PEIS. At this time, I would like to introduce our next speaker, Ms. Megan Clance. Good evening, I'm Megan Plans. I am the executive director over the master plan to redevelop the West LA campus. Over the course of the past year and a half, VA has methodically evaluated the draft master plan that we adopted in 2016 to fulfill environmental and historical due diligence as required by federal law. With the issuance of the draft P. PEIS, we are a step closer to revitalizing the West LA campus to provide housing and enhanced services for veterans and their families. VA committed through the draft master plan to restore the campus as a home for homeless and other underserved veterans and as a safe, vibrant community in which veterans and their families can access improved and expanded services. The draft master plan provides a compelling vision for the future of the West LA campus. Some of the key elements of the draft master plan include providing appropriate levels of supportive housing on the West LA campus, tailored to the needs of vulnerable veterans, especially chronically homeless, severely disabled, aging veterans with disabilities, and female veterans with dependents. Optimizing formerly leased properties, underutilized buildings, and vacant land on the campus to better serve the veteran community. Providing opportunities for veterans to interact with peers and receive other non-medical support services such as education and employment training, legal services, and benefits and modernizing, integrating, and reorganizing uses and functions on the campus to provide better access and efficiency. Providing supportive housing is the cornerstone of the draft master plan. The plan envisions at least 1,200 units of housing for homeless veterans. To achieve this, VA will rely on partnerships known as enhanced use leases or EULs. An EUL is a partnership between VA and a third party to provide housing to veterans and families. We've used the EUL process successfully at many VA facilities, including here at West LA. The way an EUL works is first, VA identifies vacant or underutilized land or buildings that can be outleased. Then VA selects a third party partner to finance, develop, renovate, and or construct and operate housing. <coughs> The partner is responsible for the cost of development and operation. VA then refers veterans for the housing and coordinates and oversees housing operations. Excuse me. Sorry, saw this one coming. Um, despite some criticism that VA is not moving fast enough to provide housing for veterans, we have made significant progress. We already have several EUL projects either completed or under development on the campus. Building 209 has been operational since 2017 with 54 supportive housing units for chronically homeless veterans. Buildings 205, 207, and 208 are next in line to be rehabilitated and will add at least 170 units of additional housing. The developers have been selected for those buildings and their work is expected to begin in the next few months. MacArthur Field has also been identified as a location for new construction of at least 150 units. A developer has been selected for that project as well, but that work is dependent on the outcome of this PEIS process. As of October 2018, we've selected a principal developer team to help us develop a plan to expedite and integrate the balance of the minimum 100, sorry, 1,200 units of permanent supportive housing and to integrate housing with other services 
as contemplated by the draft master plan. At this time, I would like to introduce our next speaker, Mr. Glenn Elliott. Good evening. My name is Glenn Elliott. I work for the Construction Facility Management Office. I'm the NEPA Implementation Officer for VA. How about that? Today I will provide a summary of the draft PEIS and the timeline for PEIS related actions. The National Environmental Policy Act of 1969 requires federal agencies to document the environmental effects of the proposed actions prior to making decisions. Two major purposes of this environmental review process are better informed decisions and citizen involvement. In compliance with NEPA, VA has analyzed the impacts of the proposed improvements, redevelopments of West Los Angeles campus outlined in the draft master plan through the draft PEIS. Once the VA has addressed public comments on this draft PEIS, publishes a final PEIS, and then issues a decision document, then the project can proceed. Displayed on the screen is a process flowchart providing high-level outline of the NEPA process. The process began when VA identified the need for an action, which is the implementation of the West Los Angeles Draft Master Plan. With the proposed action, VA assessed and determined that significant environmental effects may occur if impl implemented. Following this identification, VA issued a notice of intent to prepare a PEIS in May of 2017. VA held three scoping meetings to obtain public input on the proposed action and alternatives and to define the scope of issues to be addressed in depth in the PEIS. VA then set out to develop a draft PEIS to study in great depth the potential environmental, socioeconomic, and cultural impacts of the proposed action alternatives. This required VA to conduct numerous technical analysis to inform the draft PEIS. Draft PEIS was, com was completed and released at the beginning of December 2018 and has been made available for public review and comment until February 13, 2019. As mentioned earlier, this date reflects an extension due to the public request and due to the lapse in federal funding to other federal agencies, including EPA and the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation. During this public review period, the VA is hosting public meetings like today's meeting to solicit comments on the draft PEIS. Following the review of the draft PEIS public comments, VA will prepare a final EIS, including responses to comments received on the draft PEIS. We estimate that the final PEIS will be issued and made available to the public around May of 2019. The NEPA process concludes with the issuance of a record of decision. The basis of the NEPA action is the purpose and need. The purpose of the VA proposed action is to revitalize the West Los Angeles campus and to provide a safe and vibrant veteran-centric community where veterans in the greater Los Angeles area can access improved and expanded services. The proposed action is particularly geared towards improving VA services for vulnerable veteran populations, including veterans who are homeless, aging, female or have significant medical needs. The proposed action is needed because existing, the existing campus infrastructure is not sufficient to serve the current and future needs of the local veteran population, including healthcare, homeless housing, and supportive services. Many of the older campus facilities require significant improvement and as a result have become vacant and underutilized. Also, many of the older buildings do not meet current seismic accessibility or life safety standards. Additionally, the campus is not currently equipped to provide supportive housing and other related services. PEIS alternatives. Identifying and considering and analyzing alternatives are a key component to the NEPA process for decision making. 
implementing the draft master plan would involve multiple concurrent and or subsequent projects to be executed. Currently, VA has identified several potential action alternatives for the analysis in the draft PEIS. Alternative A, renovation of select buildings for same or new functions up to 821 units of supportive housing for, veteran, for homeless veterans would be created. Alternative B, demolition of select existing buildings and relocation of existing tenants and services to other remaining buildings. No new units of supportive housing for homeless veterans would be created. Alternative C, demolition and replacement of select existing buildings and additional construction of new buildings on open land. Up to 1,622 new units of supportive housing for homeless veterans would be created. Alternative D, renovation or demolition slash replacement of select existing buildings and additional construction of new buildings on open land. Up to 1,622 un new units of supportive housing for homeless veterans would be created. Alternative E, no action or the status quo alternative. So that's the baseline. The agency preferred alternative is the alternative that VA believes would be would best fulfill the purpose and need for the proposed action considering the economic, environmental, technical, and other factors. VA has determined that alternative D best addresses the goals of the draft master plan and is therefore our preferred, our preferred alternative. Delta? Delta. Alternative D includes projects on both North and South campus. North Campus, which is the area north of Wilshire Boulevard, would be dedicated primarily for supportive housing for homeless veterans. You'll also note that in the southern portion of campus, indicated in orange, we have another area of redevelopment. We will address those projects on the next slide. This slide fo focuses on the North Campus. VA has identified 21 underutilized existing buildings on the North Campus that could be renovated or demolished and replaced for housing. Those buildings are indicated in green on the map. The decisions as to which buildings to renovate and which to replace will depend on the condition of the building, relative cost, historic status, and other factors. The principal developer discussed earlier is working on plans to address these buildings. In addition, Alternative D proposes approximately 680,850 square feet of new buildings to be constructed on open land for additional supportive housing. The open land under consideration for construction is indicated in green on the map and includes MacArthur Field, the Heroes Golf Course, an area west of the golf course, the northeast corner of Veterans Arrington Park, an open area south of Calvet, and an open area south. Construction may not necessarily happen in all of these areas, but for the purpose of analyzing environmental impacts, VA assessed the impacts of construction on all of these areas. Between the renovation of existing buildings and newly constructed buildings, approximately 1,622 additional units of veteran housing would be created. A new town center is also proposed that would feature social and recreational opportunities for the veterans, as well as access additional resources including education, training, and benefit services. The proposed location for the town center is located in purple on the map. South Campus is also addressed under the preferred alternative. Alternative D proposes to demolish most of the medical buildings inside Dowland Drive including portions of the main hospital and replace them with modern facilities that are compliant with applicable seismic accessibility and life safety requirements. Other health care, food services, and research facilities currently on the North Campus would be consolidated into the South Campus. PEIS review areas. The draft PEIS analyzes various resource areas in depth, identifying both beneficial and detrimental effects of the proposed action. 
As mentioned earlier, NEPA provides an integrated review of all applicable federal, state, and local environmental laws to com comprehensively evaluate a proposed action's potential impacts. The list displayed on the screen outlines the review areas covered in the draft PEIS, including areas of particular concern raised by the community, such as traffic, noise, and utilities. Detailed technical studies were conducted for many of these areas, and copies of those studies are available on the draft master plan website provided earlier in the presentation. In the following slides, we have summarized the impacts of the alternative D identified in the PEIS associated with the review areas previously described. The table identifies review areas, technical reports completed to analyze impacts and the mitigation measures proposed. A detailed description of the impacts of each review area is included in the draft PEIS. So as you can see, we have aesthetics, air emissions, cultural resources, including historic properties, which Hector will speak to later, geology and soil, and hydrology specific on this slide. These are the reports or the models that went into the analysis of the impacts associated with those. And those are the mitigation measures that were established at this point in time and are documented in the PEIS draft PEIS. Here again are some other areas that were listed in that previous slide. Wildlife, habitat, noise and vibration, land use, floodplain, wetlands and coastal zones, socioeconomic and community services, along with solid waste and hazardous materials. You'll notice in something like floodplains and wetlands and coastal zones, there was a wetland survey per, uh, performed, but there's no applicable mitigation. That's because in this case, there are no wetlands impacted, no floodplains located, and it's not within a coastal zone on this property. Lastly, transportation and traffic, utilities, environmental justice, and cumulative impacts. Applicable reports, PIS transportation impact analysis, which everybody's very interested in, utilities, condition assessment, and under cumulative impacts, we have a list of additional actions that are proposed and also analyzed in this document. And again, here are mitigation measures that to date we have come up with and are included in the draft PEIS. Other cumulative actions. I also want to mention that there are other projects at the West Los Angeles campus that are currently in the pipeline but outside of the proposed action. These projects were conceived before the draft master plan was issued or are being led by entities outside of the DA. However, all of the projects have received environmental and historic due diligence. In addition, the impacts from those projects are considered in the draft PEIS cumulative impacts. That means that we looked at all of the impacts from the proposed actions plus the impacts of these projects when we conducted our analysis. One of those projects is the construction of a column barrier at the east side of the north campus, as you can see circled in blue in the image. VA's Los Angeles National Cemetery has been closed to new burials since 1970 and to niche internments since the mid-1990s to ensure that LA veterans have local internment options the National Cemetery Administration is constructing a columbarium with 90,000 niches, the first of three planned phases of construction that, be that began in November of 2017 and is scheduled to be completed in spring-summer 2019. Another is the rehabilitation of buildings 205, 207, and 208 through an enhanced use lease for supportive housing, as mentioned earlier in the presentation. You can see the locations of those buildings on the North Campus circled in red, conceptual plan for the renovation of building 205, 207, and 208 was originated in 2013 prior to the draft master plan. Efforts to analyze the environmental and historic impacts of this action were initiated at that time. However, the project supports the master plan and the cumulative impacts of those projects is considered in the draft PEIS. Lastly, Metro is planning to expand the purple line to include a new station on the south side of the West Los Angeles campus. You can see that location circled in purple, just north of the main hospital building in what is now a parking lot. Another location that will be impacted by that is the northwestern corner of campus where LA Metro plans to leave their tunneling equipment. VA and LA Metro 
have been working closely to identify the environmental impacts of constructing and operating that station. And although that project is being conducted by LA Metro, VA is considering those cumulative impacts in the draft EEIS. That concludes my summary of the draft EEIS. At this point in time, I would like to introduce the next speaker, Mr. Hector Abreu. Good evening. Uh, my name is Hector Brito. I work at the Office of Construction and Facilities Management at the VA Central Office, and um, I'm here to talk to you about historic preservation. The National Historic Preservation Act, which was enacted in 1966, is commonly referred to as NHPA. Section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act requires federal agencies to evaluate the impact of federally funded projects or undertakings, as we call them, to historic properties and, and to be good stewards of historic federal property. A historic property can include a prehistoric or historic district, a site, a building, a structure, or an object which is included in or eligible, eligible excuse me, for inclusion in the National Register of Historic Places, which is a list maintained and overseen by the National Park Service. Section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act defines an undertaking as a project or an activity or a program funded by a federal agency, including those carried out by or on behalf of a federal agency or those carried out with federal financial assistance as well as those requiring a federal permit license or approval and of course those subject to state or local regulations administrated by or delegated to uh, delegated by I'm sorry a federal agency in this case the undertaking is the implementation of the draft master plan for the West LA campus. In the interest of efficiency, completeness, and facilitating public involvement, VA is substituting the review procedures of the National Historic Preservation Act with those of NEPA. This means that documentation, <laughs> review periods, public participation required for NEPA compliance will be used for complying with the National Historic Preservation Act. Section 106 also provides for the participation of consulting parties who have demonstrated a legal, economic, or historic preservation interest in the project. This will include agencies such as the State Historic Preservation Office, or SHPO, the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation, the ACHP, Native American tribes, representatives from local governments, and other interested parties. This consultation effort was a critical element during the implementation and development of the draft PEIS and will continue through the development of the final PEIS. Area of Potential Effect. The Area of Potential Effect, or APE as we call it, is the geographic area or areas within which an undertaking may directly or indirectly cause alterations to the character or the use of the historic property within, if any of these properties exist. The AP for this undertaking are the boundaries of the West Los Angeles campus and the Los Angeles National Cemetery, which can be seen here in the map in dashed orange lines, which I'm sure you all can see. So I'm gonna see this my little pointer here if I can, oh, is it on? Oh, there we go, now I got it. So basically the APE includes the entire campus, the North Park, the South Park, as well as the Common Barrier area, and this is the cemetery. So this is what we call the area of potential effect. Uh, historic properties within this AP include the Wadsworth, Wadsworth Chapel, the Streetcar Depot, known archaeological deposits, potential archaeological sites, 
and the West Los Angeles VA Historic District, including the West Los Angeles, I'm sorry, including the Los Angeles National Cemetery. The West Los Angeles VA Historic District, which was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 19, two, in, sorry, in 2014, is most likely to be affected by the undertaking. The historic district includes many of the campus buildings, but not all of them, and includes some of the landscape elements and portions of the circulation patterns of the North Campus. The boundaries of the district are indicated in the map by dashed purple lines. I'll help you with that one too. So it's mostly the Northern Campus, a portion of the Southern Campus there, so it doesn't include the entire Southern Campus, just that little portion there, and of course the cemetery and the part we conquer. The uh, Wadsworth the Wadsworth Chapel, Wadsworth Chapel, also known as the Catholic Protestant Chapel, was individually listed on the National Register in 1972, so it was listed before the district was, and is also a contributing resource to the West LA Historic District. The chapel is on the North Campus and can be seen on the map circled in blue. Building number 66 has been called by several names including the streetcar depot, newsstand, or the trolley stop. This building was listed, individually listed on the National Register also in 1972, and is also a contributing resource to the National Register District. The depot is also on the map and is circled in red. And it is up here, chapel, streetcar depot. This table identifies the five alternatives analyzed in the PIS and their potential effects to historic and cultural resources. As discussed earlier by Glenn, alternative D is the VA preferred alternative. This alternative has the potential to affect historic buildings that are contributing resources to the West LA Historic District, especially if the decision is made to demolish one or more of these buildings or if the buildings are renovated in a manner that is inconsistent with the Secretary of Interior standards for rehabilitation. In addition, construction of new buildings within the boundaries of the historic district has the potential to be an adverse effect, an adverse effect depending on the design, the height, and the massing of that building. Finally, any ground disturbance created by renovation or construction activities has the potential to uncover potentially eligible archaeological resources or sites. It is important to note that Section 106 requires federal agencies to seek ways to avoid, minimize, or mitigate the effects of their actions on historic properties. But it does not require the federal agency, in this case VA, in this case VA, to choose the alternative least likely to the historic resource, or to choose an alternative that has no adverse effect. PA. The way that federal agencies often resolve adverse effects is by signing a programmatic agreement, or PA, with the consulting parties. The PA is a legal procedural document that records the terms and conditions upon which we resolve these adverse effects to these uh, historic resources. The VA has, a, a VA has drafted a PA for this undertaking, and that draft PA is included in Appendix B of the draft PEIS. Since specific individual projects are unknown at this time, the PA presents several procedural steps for future consultation on each project. So it basically guides us on how to react to different adverse effects or potential adverse effects and how we go about resolving those adverse effects. Uh, it includes issues such as presentations of uh, how we present the final project details, how we find the effects that the projects will have on the historic resources, and devise and negotiate and uh, present potential mitigation measures that would be necessary for these potential projects. ASM, archaeology. As mentioned earlier, one of the potential effects of any undertaking is the discovery of potentially eligible archaeological sites during ground disturbance activities. 
VA, in consultation with the State Historic Preservation Office, the Advisory Council of Historic Preservation, and local Native American tribes, have completed an, what's called an archaeological sensitivity model, an ASM, that identifies areas of the campus that have low, moderate, and high sensitivity for prehistoric and historic archaeological deposits. Areas of low sensitivity are displayed in green, as you see here on the map. Moderate sensitivity is in yellow, and high sensitivity is in red. Based on that sensitivity, different identification procedures are recommended in the document. The PA outlines procedures, will outline, it's still in draft form, the PA will outline procedures for VA with consulting party input and how to evaluate sites for their eligibility for the National Register of Historic Places and how we're going to mitigate for these adverse effects if they cannot be avoided. This concludes the summary of the uh, NHPA compliance procedures. And at this time, I'd like to turn the podium back to Mr. Musa. Thank you. Thank you, Hector. Um, good evening again, folks. As mentioned earlier, my name is Ian Musa. I serve as the Vice President with Concord Federal Group. Um, I'm also tonight's meeting moderator. We thank you for participating and encourage you to visit our website for more information about the draft master plan and the draft PEIS. The draft master plan website provides veterans, community partners, and the general public with a one-stop shop for centralized draft master plan information and updates on progress and next steps. Now, we move on to the open forum where we welcome your feedback, comments, or questions about the draft PEIS. I want to take a moment to reframe expectations for these public meetings, specifically the open forum session. Unlike VA town hall meetings, these meetings are intended to receive your comments on the draft PEIS, but we may not be able to resolve all of your concerns today. We will have all of your comments in writing, and a court reporter is tracking all statements made today. All comments will be reviewed and evaluated prior to the conclusion of the NEPA process. As a reminder, comments should be written out on a comment card. Comment cards are available at the welcome table and are also being distributed around the room by Matt Buckley. If you need a comment card, please raise your hand. Matt will walk around, hand you a comment card, um, and you can write your comment there. I will read the comment out loud in a random order and the panel will provide a response as appropriate. This will ensure that the comment period proceeds in an orderly fashion and that everyone gets a fair chance to share their comment. Also, comments may be submitted through February 13th, 2019, online, via email, or by mail. Finally, as a reminder, comments should be limited to those related to the draft PEIS. Questions or comments relating to benefits, health care, or other issues should be addressed at the appropriate table located in the back of the room. So I'll check in with Matt if you have any written comments. Okay. So if there are no written comments, uh, I'll open it up to a true open forum session. So I'll ask folks to raise their hands and I'll just call randomly. Yeah. If you could just stand by for the mic. Um, and also I'd ask you to state your name for the record. For reference, and, and I'll defer uh, to the panel as well, but when we refer to the North Campus, this is Wilshire Boulevard. The North Campus refers to everything uh, on the north side of Wilshire Boulevard, and then this is the South Campus. 
So I can walk you through specific buildings or areas uh, on the North Campus if that's a preference. Okay, so um, as Hector mentioned earlier, this is the uh, Wadsworth Chapel. Um, you have the theaters here. This is what's um, a large green area, sometimes referred to as the Great Lawn. Um, these buildings here, 114, 115, 116, are research. Um, you have your domiciliaries here, um, 214, 217. Uh, this area is the uh, engineering kind of district. So you have um, a multitude of engineering buildings here. Um, UCLA's baseball stadium is here. This portion um, is actually utilized by the National Cemetery Administration. This is where the Columbarium expansion project that was mentioned earlier um, is here. Uh, I'm pointing to this building 209, making reference the first um, enhanced use lease, first 54 units of permanent supportive housing. You have 205 and 208 here, and then you have 207 here. Those were the next three buildings uh, in line for enhanced use leases. Um, you have 156, 157, 158 buildings here. You have the Welcome Center, building 257. Um, and then let's see, go up. This is 258 here. This is the um, SERS building, the homeless program. Um, as I mentioned, this is 257. You have the 22 acre lease with Brentwood School and VA um, in this area. Let me cut it off. Um, you have the golf course in this area. You have Veterans Barrington Park. That's the revocable license with the city of Los Angeles here. Uh, let me just pause. I feel like I threw a bunch of information. If Megan, you want to jump in? Oh, sorry. Uh, MacArthur Field is this area. Sorry. Right here is MacArthur Field. Any other specific areas that weren't identified or that you had a question about where they're located? All right, uh, I will open it up. If anyone else has questions, comments um, that they want to raise tonight, feel free to raise your hand. I'll also mention um, if you want to issue a comment that's not written and you want to do it verbally, but you don't want to do it to the group, um, we'll ask you to stay after the meeting and you can give it directly to the court reporter. Sir? Yeah, good evening. Thank you for allowing us to be here and share our thoughts about this issue. Um, you know, we've been talking for the last two, three years about all this beautiful stuff that we are doing to better improve, you know, the land on the other side over there. But my uh, interest is the cost factor for all the environmental impact that has been done in the last three years. No one has discussed any amounts of more or less money that we've been, uh, what you guys are doing. And, and I'm just curious, do you have for the last three years a rough idea of what the cost is for the impact environmental consultants that have been doing the work here. And again, a more or less cost of uh, this project that is being done for the 1200 units from the private medical con uh, contractors on up to all the people that are doing it. Do we have a rough idea what, what we're looking at in reference to having this completed? I'm just curious, thank you. And sir, before uh, a response, if, if you could just uh, provide your name for the record. Uh, my name is Alfred Arian, and I just have one more other thing. I was hoping that we would get some literature that we can also follow up what you guys just read, and I just counted maybe about 40 people here. Maybe half of them would probably take the literature on whatever uh, issue you were discussing. I mean, next time I'd love to have some literature. It just really helps me out. I'm not a computer whiz. So I just love to have this with me for my records. Thank you. What's that? Sure. I'll turn it to Glenn. Sir, with the with the environmental assessment, when it comes to costs associated with the development and construction, there's North and South Campus. Um, Part of the principal developer is helping us design and kind of lay out what makes most cost sense. So I can't really give you an accurate number at this point in time. Um, that is something we can follow up with as that is developed out um, for 
the environmental, the environmental is ongoing and continuing to study. So again, that that's something towards the end, we will be able to give you a cost estimate as to what it actually costs to develop this document and all the environmental studies that are associated with it. Uh, currently, the VA is paying for uh, the environmental studies associated with this as it is an environmental action, and various sources of income are paying for the development of the campus. Enhanced use lease is a separate uh, topic, or separate funding. Um, major construction associated with South Campus, that's VA funded. Welcome, sir. Next slide. Sir? Curtis Mack, Grafton Park Conservants. Ian or Megan or whomever, could you give us an update on the issues that the, the IG has identified with regard to the leases and how they may uh, affect the, the final master plan? Sure, Megan plans again. Um, for those in the room who may not have the context behind the question, I'll frame the question. We did have a, um, our VA Office of the Inspector General uh, came and did a review of land use agreements on the campus as required by our West LA Leasing Act. They issued a report in September 2018 that found some improprieties with respect to certain third party uses on the, on the campus. We have uh, a process that is set out by the, the rules of our IG that we have to provide quarterly updates to them and we are, uh, set ourselves uh, a, a time horizon of a year, which ends in September 2019, to um, address the concerns that they raised. So we're in, the, in that process. Um, interestingly, the way that our West LA Leasing Act was worded prior to September 2018, uh, it required the Secretary of the Department of Veterans Affairs to uh, certify to Congress that we had complied with all obligations, uh, or all, sorry, all recommendations in the IG audit report before the secretary could enter into any lease, including an enhanced use lease to provide housing on the campus. That's a very unusual way for a, an IG audit report um, to have consequences. It, that's just not generally the way that things work in the federal government. There was an amendment to the West LA Leasing Act that was passed in September 2018 um, that in essence does not stop us in our tracks in terms of providing supportive housing to veterans through enhanced use leases simply because we have outstanding recommendations from the IG. So to get to your fundamental question, what's the impact of that on the work that we're doing? We need to comply with the IG's recommendations. We're working hard to do that, but that process does not stop us from uh, providing housing through enhanced use leases. Thank you, Megan. Uh, I'll open it up. If folks have a question or comment, feel free to raise your hand. I will do one final check. Pam? Hi, Libby Dankman with KBCC. I'm a reporter, public radio reporter. I'm just curious what types of actions you're taking to comply right now with the OIG recommendations and if you could talk a little bit more specifically about what's going on especially with the Brentwood School. Uh, so I, I can talk at a high level. I, I, it's not appropriate at this particular point in our decision making to talk really specifically about approaches with respect to each land use. Um, but the, the variety of things available to us include terminating uh, a land use that the IG found to be improper, renegotiating that land use to try to bring it within compliance with applicable law. In uh, at least one case, maybe two, the IG's concern was that a land use um, wasn't improper but was uh, documented improperly. So for example, we have a pre-existing arrangement with the California Department of Transporta Transportation, Caltrans, which was recorded as a revocable license, but probably should have been handled as an easement. So uh, in a case like that, the um, approach probably is simply to redocument it using the appropriate type of land use form. And so those are the variety of things that we are looking at. Um, we're still in the process of figuring out what our strategy is with respect to each agreement. And because the recommendations of the IG went to um, senior leadership in VA central office, the recommendations weren't made to the 
the medical center director here, they went to a much higher level. Um, uh, it is therefore appropriate to get the folks who had to sign off on the response. They need to understand what our proposed strategy is and they need to buy into it. So we're in the process of uh, mapping that out and, and getting the uh, requisite checks up, up on our, our chain. Um, as I said, we do have until the end of the fiscal year, which ends in September, to certify compliance with everything. We have to provide quarterly updates to the IG on how we're doing. So um, we don't get to wait until you know September 28th and then go, oh, whoops, we forgot to do anything. So we're working on it and uh, do plan to be as transparent as we can be as we move forward uh, to try to do the right thing to ensure that we're making proper use of the campus and also continuing to have those um, partnerships and relationships with community partners that enhance VA's ability to serve veterans. Thank you, Megan. Um, I'll open it up again. If you have a question or comment, please raise your hand. So if the question goes to height, no, we have not gotten there yet. Um, as far as I know, that, that level of design has not yet been identified. So what we're looking at uh, at this point is a, at a much higher level, how many units can that parcel accommodate? And then we will move from there into a plan to sort of set the design parameters for everything that's happening on the building. So we're not, on the, on the property rather. So we're not there. We're not at a point of saying how many square feet or how high. Uh, 150 units there out of a total of 1,200, so no, that's not, the MacArthur Guild is not the bulk of it. Thank you. Uh, if you could just say your name for the record. Oh, Nancy Friedman, City Council. Thank you. We're bringing the mic to you. Wendy, Wendy Rosen again. So, so can you um, show us the overlay of uh, alternative D on both the north while you have it up and then the south and also show us where the uh, subway is going. Just, just so we understand the overlay on this property of what your proposal is. Because like Nancy said, I didn't understand the square footages and the numbers either. And if you could explain that better, I think that would be helpful. Okay, there's a lot packed into that one. So let me try to kind of step you through. So, uh, please report. Okay, so let's start with the Metro. The Metro is, uh, we are right here, right now, downstairs. Uh, the Metro will come right across here this, with the station. MacArthur Field with the 680,000 square feet is located right up here. There isn't actually an overlay for alternative D because it's, as, as we mentioned before, we're working with the principal developer to help develop that out. Um, if you actually switch to the South Campus uh, schematic master plan, um, this is a potential design of the South Campus. And as I mentioned before, here is the Metro, metro Tunnel. The actual station would be located right here. And again, we're, we're located approximately right here. saying that some, some areas are not going to be built on and some areas are going to be built on. Can you show us where those areas are? Those areas haven't been determined. We can, like like when Ian showed you the different areas on campus, the different green space areas, there, those are the potentials. Good. Okay, so what he was speaking about is this area, uh, the great <coughs> lawn area, um, golf course area, those are the areas that are in green here. Those are the potential locations. 
but we haven't actually identified exactly where they are going to be built upon at this point in time. That's actually what we're looking at right now. Megan Flancy, and I just want to, um, I think, kind of add to that. So one of the things that we're looking to the principal developer team to help us do is identify what mix of renovating and rehabilitating existing buildings versus new construction is going to be least impactful, most cost effective, and most um, efficient in terms of time. And we have not, we're not there yet in terms of deciding, you know, one alternative that is built into uh, that alternative D is everything other than MacArthur Field could be rehab of existing buildings. We just, we haven't gotten to the granularity of, we think we need new construction here because we're only gonna build X number of units by rehabilitating existing buildings. We will get there. We hope to get there very quickly because we need to get to that level of granularity before we can really ramp up the delivery of the housing. So we're hoping to get there real quick, but we're just not there yet. Thank you. I'll open it up once more. If you have a question or comment, please raise your hand. Larry Van Cura, National American Legion. Um, putting on our way back hat a year or more ago, there was some thought utilities capability to support the density that we're looking at and whether LADWP or the other feeds to the campus would be able would need to be enlarged or added to and the infrastructure has to be able to match the density as you go or otherwise you just got an encampment do we have any idea about that at this point do that uh, it takes into account some of the things we were discussing about uh, working with uh, LA Metro and their needs along with our campus-wide development needs. One of the things you saw up there was a the utility plan. That utility plan is, has taken a look at, okay, here's the baseline. This is what we have existing. What do we need to go forward? So that's one of the things, but also taking into account what is the capacity of what exists and what are our impacts to that system. So that's what we're actually going through right now. And again, as we look at it, with the different alternatives and potential locations, it's all of the principal developer building out in the North Campus, some of those items is also taking a look at from an, an example. If we build this out, what would be the avenue or what would be the needs from utilities associated with that? So as that gets developed, then we're gonna have a clearer answer on what the impacts are and what the path forward is associated with that. Thanks, Glenn. All right, uh, I'll open it up again. Folks, just raise your hand if you have a question or comment. Wendy Rosen again. I have a question for you about just looking uh, out into the future. I mean, we hope at some point that the homeless problem gets addressed and that you know, as time goes on, we won't need this housing for homeless. So what, what is the plan looking out into the future for this property in terms of what you're building? That's a really excellent point and it's one that we talk about all the time and that we have been talking about with our principal developer team. We want to make sure uh, that what we build is sustainable over time and is um, flexible enough to meet evolving needs of veterans. Um, I. Uh, I'm going to assume from your question that you're an optimist like me and that you believe we can as a, as a city and a community and, and a nation uh, at some point uh, permanently and successfully address the underlying causes of homelessness, including veteran homelessness, such that the folks who uh, may need or want to live on this campus uh, aren't living there because they used to be living on the street. So um, we're building that thinking into our projections uh, and also we're building in what we know about the um, sort of evolving nature of the veteran population in Los Angeles. Uh, the veteran population's getting older, uh, it's also becoming more diverse, and so we're looking at uh, flexible ways to approach housing so that it's not a one-size-fits-all, uh, or sorry, a single-purpose model, but instead is something that's more flexible. 
Um, to that point, we're also thinking about the fullness of, of time for, for a single veteran or a single group of veterans. So um, we do anticipate that homeless veterans may come onto the campus for housing, may then um, develop new skills, become um, employed, get more income. They may choose to continue to live on the campus, but no longer need permanent supportive housing or that type of service. We wanna make sure that they have the ability to stay on the campus as their uh, situation and needs change. So great question. It's one that we are um, definitely working into our thinking. That's very in, in reference to what you were just sharing as far as building a relationship, now that you, you know, in the near future when you have the 1,200 units built up and we have all these veterans that are eager to do what they can to get their lives in order, what I learned in the last town hall meeting when our veterans came here and they were sharing about the lack of communication in building a relationship with the leadership as, as uh, in reference to the director and his her staff on how can the veterans like have little meetings, and I don't know if you're doing this already, uh, have a relationship with them so that you can find out what their, you know, what the issues are there. Because I think it's very important. Uh, from January to August, we had eight suicides. I didn't see anything on the news media. And I think we can build communications here to make their living conditions a lot better and, and, and try to get the help that, you know, we need to get to them so that we can save a veteran's life. And as a veteran, I am concerned about that issue. And I hope uh, you either doing it or in the future that you will think about building that relationship with them. Because as a new star for veterans, we want to see our veterans build this relationship with the VA so that we can uh, work together and see good things happen for veterans. That's my concern. Again, thank you very much. It's a wonderful point. I'm going to try to address it quick before my voice goes completely. Um, it, it is a it's a it's a terrific point, and it's one that we've been um, talking about a lot, both internally here within GLA and with our principal developer team, um, who have all kinds of wonderful experience um, providing a thriving community for homeless uh, folks, veterans, and otherwise. And I think a huge part of that is understanding the things that make somebody feel connected to a community and making sure that we build all of those things into the community that we're building here so that it happens organically, but then also being real disciplined ourselves to ensure that we are providing opportunities, town halls, um, homeowners association type uh, opportunities for the folks living on the campus to uh, have conversations with their clinicians, with administrators here at the hospital, with each other, uh, and with folks in the community. So it, it's, it's a great point and it's one that we really are building into our thinking and we are blessed to have a principal developer team that's got um, decades of experience doing exactly that and doing it well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, open it up once more. Questions, comments, feel free to raise your hand. All right, well, thank you very much uh, for joining. As a reminder, same meeting will occur tomorrow, uh, 8.30 to 11.30 in the morning, and then we'll have another meeting on Thursday, same time as tonight. Thank you.